let's get started with adding our z-axis linear rods because of the size of this printer and the size of the cantilever print bed we're going to use 12 millimeter linear rods these are hardened steel and it's important for the rods for the z-axis to be hardened steel bearings will run on this rod and you don't want to run grooves into your rod we'll be using the extra tall or extra long flange flanged bearings SHF12 supports they'll sit in the end and they'll mount on the top and bottom of the frame like so now the placement of the, these at the rear of your printer or rear of your frame we want to measure two and a half or two and three quarter inches from the upright. See there, that's been marked in that spot there and that spot there. If you have the SHF 12s, you notice that this is split where we mark that is exactly where we want that split to be that, that'll be the placement for these on the bottom just like that and also this flat edge this flat edge here should be flush with the edge of the frame and so yeah, those are placed we'll clamp them down Punch a spot, try to make it as close as possible to the center of this, of this hole. goal is not to go all the way through. We just want to start this back because we're going to remove this, remove the brackets. Then use the drill guide. these in we'll use a uh, flathead screws just to kind make sure that they are beveled like this what this does versus a regular screw which would allow this to have play back and forth this beveling at the bottom makes it self-center we want self-centering to keep these in place the use the screw not the screw and you probably can get away with uh, inch and a half screws Won't necessarily need two inch screws or inch and three quarter screws because these screws are just a little bit long.
since that's tightened, now we can go back and tighten the other side of this. Okay, before we go any further with the Z-axis, we're going to fabricate the print bed just because I like to be able to place the print bed with the bearings on the rods and make sure that the travel is accurate. If I keep this unsecured and attach the print bed to the bottom and then work, check its motion to the top of the printer, I'll be ensured that these are lined up perfectly and will these work. These corners, perfectly. this is the machined part of this machined, not by myself um, from the factory. On these corners here, we want to make a spot one inch from this edge and one inch from that edge. And that spot will be the center point where we'll start making the hole to fit this I'll bearing. I'll start drilling these holes and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Holes drilled using a half inch drill bit and that does fit over here. I will probably end up taking a round file to the inside of these holes just to smooth them out just to avoid that sound and make the holes just a little bit bigger. Setting the placement of this now that I filed out. Trying to place this so that the print bed is not resting. I have a piece of wood here that the print bed rests on and maintains its, its balanced without the assistance of these poles. So theoretically I can take the linear rods out and this will still just sit there. I'll try to get this relatively centered. As you see because the hole is larger than the linear rod you will have some play. Gotta do smaller clamps work better. Just be testing. That's what we want. Free movement. And once we get this bolted down to the bottom, we'll finally bolt the SHF 12s to the top cross member. Once done, screw holes, rod hole. The bearing can fit right on these spots. Okay, there's another part of the print platform to add rigidity and flatness to it. Um, we're going to use a single track upright. I got this from, it's made by Rubbermaid. Got it from the local big box hardware store. It comes in 24 inches, 35 inches. There may be longer lengths. The size we need is 16, as this one's already cut to. Then we got the length of the print platform, the Z platform. And we're going to end up bolting it down in three spots along along the bottom side of print bed and that's going to allow that's going to prevent the springboard effect when there's sudden movements by the by the nozzle by the extruder and it will make printing much more reliable and your prints will be a lot better okay with this you probably have a hole at one end or either end of your track that's approximately one inch from the end 
what we want to do is use that to mark a spot one inch here eight inches and one inch from this edge this side if you cut it it may not have a hole just use your drill bit and make that hole a little bit larger in this part of the track and create a hole for yourself at eight inches if there isn't one already in place this stuff drills pretty easy just about as easy as aluminum okay we have these the flange brackets mounted we keep them a little loose I'm going to make sure this slides properly and we'll tighten it up to ensure a proper fit. As you see right there, there's some binding. I want these to seat just right. Now that it's properly seated, and I tightened up two opposing screws on both of these flanges. With a third tightened up. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring it all the way up to the top. Just like the bottom, we're going to line up the flat of this SHF12 to the back of the aluminum frame. Again in the holes. We'll take back off. Now we'll work on attaching the rails. 
this is pretty straightforward connected the three points on each rail in the next video we'll start working on the y-axis